Hello, my name is Tom Nunes, Applications Engineer for Pressure Sensors at Melexus. In this video, I will explain how to configure a Melexus pressure sensor by using the Melexus programmable toolbox. This video is applicable to MLX90817, MLX90821, MLX90328 and MLX90329 as they share a common software tool named 90330. The beginning of this video covers the required tools and software to start configuring your pressure sensor. Next, I will briefly go over the main functions of the user interface. And finally, I will demonstrate how to configure and test a pressure sensor with this software. To configure a product with the 90330 software, you need a PTC04 equipped with a Pressure01 daughter board. The PTC04 should have the 90330 firmware loaded in its memory. In addition, you also need a Windows PC with the Lexus Probable Toolbox installed. On top of the toolbox, you need to install the 90330 PSF and user interface. The PSF is a function library which enables you to configure the products through the PTC04. The user interface is an implementation of the PSF for lab and demo purposes to get started and to show what is possible with the PSF. The video Melexus Universal Programmer for Magnetic Sensors explains how to install a daughter board and where to find the software. Finally, a pressure sensor has to be connected to the daughter boards by its three application pins, which are the supply input, output and ground. There are two ways to connect those pins. The first option is to use the screw connector in the middle of the daughter board. The supply input of the sensor should be connected to terminal 1 the output to terminal 3, and the ground of the sensor to terminal 5. The second option is to use the D-sub-15 connector on the edge of the daughter board. There, the supply input should be connected to terminal 1, output to terminal 2, and ground to terminal 3 of the connector. It is recommended to also connect the three sense terminals in a production environment to improve the accuracy of the PTC04 readings. There is one terminal for the supply voltage, one for the ground, and one for the output. A full pin description can be found in the datasheet of the Pressure01 daughter board. Once the PTC04 and software are installed correctly, you can open the 90330 user interface module in the Melexis programmable toolbox. This will open the user interface and the software will immediately try to connect to a connected PTC04. If no error messages appear, the connection was successful. When the user interface window is active, the COM port through which the PTC04 is connected is displayed at the bottom of the Nexus Pro Programmable Toolbox window. When you first open the user interface, it will open in the Solver tab. This is one of the three main tabs which group together various functions. The Solver tab is used to calibrate a pressure sensor. If you're using factory calibrated products from Lexus, it is not needed to calibrate the device yourself. In that case, it is important not to press new device or reset calibration, as this can override parts of the factory calibration. A separate video explains how to use this tab to do a full calibration and how to easily modify an existing calibration. The second tab is called e square prompt parameters. It gives an overview of parameters stored in eSquarePom and allows you to modify them. Depending on which product is selected, the amount of parameters changes in the user interface, so only those parameters which are relevant for the product are visible. All parameters are grouped in three tabs called Calibration, Send and Diagnostic. The parameters in the Calibration tab all relate to the calibration or output in some way. For example, the digital compensation parameters at the top left, which together form the offset, gain and non-linearity compensation of a pressure signal. These parameters are set during calibration and are responsible for the output transfer curve. On the bottom, the three Melexis IDs are also visible. The combination of these IDs is unique for each device. The Send tab is used to configure the digital send output. This tab is only visible when a product with send is selected in the user interface. Notable settings are the send mode at the top, which sets what information is transmitted each send frame, and the serial ID tables at the bottom, which is used to set which information is available on the slow channel. The last group of e-square parameters relate to diagnostics. 
The most important parameter is the error bits. This selects which diagnostics will be flagged at the output. Pressing the question mark creates a window where you can individually add or remove flags. The thresholds for the over and under voltage flags can be set to. All other parameters in this tab are only used with the sent output. They provide more options on how to report diagnostic information. The buttons visible on the right side of the e pump parameters tab are used to read and write at the e pump, as will be demonstrated later in this video. The third tab is the advanced tab. This tab contains a collection of functions which can be used to test the connected device and collect some data. On the left side you can access the physical memory addresses. The top part gives individual access while the bottom part can read and write the full e pump content at once. This allows you to save and recover the e pump contents of a fresh device before experimenting with e pump parameters in the other tabs. The middle part of the advanced tab is only visible on a product with send output. It allows you to lock send frames and save them to a file. Every 18 lock send frames, the slow channel message is also displayed in the lock. On the right side are more controls available for all products. The first three are the most important. Connect device does a communication test with a product. Set VDD sets the supply voltage to the desired level and Clear VDD resets the supply voltage to 0 volt to reset the connected device. The measurements button at the bottom opens a separate window where you can plot the pressure output over time. The final part of this video is the demonstration. I will use the advanced tab to verify an MLX90821. Change some parameters in a square pump and verify this change again in the advanced tab. First, I select the MLX90821 in the product menu to adapt the user interface for this product. As this product has both send and analog outputs, I need to specify which of the two outputs is connected to the PTC04 in the settings window. The settings are open from the window menu at the top. In this demo, I am using the send output, so send should be checked in the bottom right. In case the analog output is used, out should be checked instead. While in the settings window, I also increase the measure filter at the left, because when logging send, this setting decides how many frames are decoded. If instead of the send logging function, the measurements window is used to plot pressure and temperature, the filter should be set to 1. The other settings relate to timings and voltage levels for communicating between PTC04 and pressure sensor. Most can remain their default value in all situations except for the setting T send bit, which is the tick time used to decode send output. By default, this is set to 3 microseconds, but when the send output is configured with a different tick time, this setting has to be changed as well to decode the send output with the PC04. Click Apply before exiting the settings window. Now I will check the output of the device by setting the supply to 5V and pressing the Lock Send button in the Advanced tab. The user interface will now show a number of send frames. The send frames are divided in 5 columns. The first column is the status nibble, displayed in binary notation. The second column shows the content of fast channel 1 in hexadecimal notation. For these products, this channel shows the pressure information. The third column is fast channel 2. Depending on the e square pump configuration, this channel can contain temperature information, a counter, or the inverse value of fast channel 1. The fourth column shows the CRC of the fast channels. Lastly, there is a fifth column showing slow channel information when available. Every slow channel message requires 18 send frames to be decoded first. In the current e square pump configuration, the slow channel message 01 which contains diagnostic information, is displayed just as often as all the other messages. In the next steps of this demo, I will change this so this information is sent every other slow channel message. First, I will store the current e pump content in a separate file by pressing the Read Full button on the left side and then Save to File to store it somewhere on my PC. To change the e square pump configuration, I go to the e square pump parameters tab and load in the e square pump. This is done in three steps. First, press connect the device. Then read e square pump and then copy e square pump to temporary. 
This clears any data from a previously connected device and checks the communication. Then it reads the full e square ROM in memory of the PC. And finally, it makes a copy of the full e, e square ROM, which can be edited. To change the messages in the slow channel, I go to the send tab of the e square ROM parameters. The grid on the bottom left configures the slow channel messages from the send standard. Here I disable ID01 from the normal sequence by setting a 0 in the EN column and set a repetition factor in the red column. A value of 1 corresponds to transmitting the diagnostic every other message. The value in the left EN, rep and data columns will be written to e squarecom while the right EN, rep and data columns contain the values that were already programmed in the, in the e squarecom the next step is you program the eSquareProm and then verify that the new settings were written correctly by pressing the similarly named buttons Program eSquareProm and Verify eSquareProm with Temporary. Pressing the Program eSquareProm button creates a pop-up window to confirm that you want to override the current eSquareProm content. The Verify eSquareProm with Temporary button also causes the pop-up to appear to show whether the programming was successful. Finally, the changes can be verified again in the advanced tab by first clearing VDD to reset the device, then set VDD to 5V and then log send to inspect the send frames. When scrolling through the send frames, the diagnostic information at ID01 appears every other slow channel message. So the change in the e square point configuration was successful. To end the demo, I will recover the original state from the e square point we saved earlier to a file. First press read from file to display the e program content in the raw e program table. Then press write full to program the device. Like the program e program button, write full generates a pop-up to confirm that you want to override the e program content. The device is now back as it was before I changed the repetition of the diagnostic information. This covers the basic features of the user interface. An in-depth explanation on how to change the transfer curve can be found in a separate video. Additional information and a full description of every parameter can be found in the software menu included in the software package of 90330.